Stephen A. called it the Clippers at the end of yesterday's show. Unfortunately for Clipper Nation, it didn't provide the necessary encouragement. They once again failed to make it to a conference final after blowing a 3-1 series lead to Denver. Stephen A., I want to start with you. Doc Rivers shouldered the blame after the Clippers were eliminated. But how much of the blame really should fall on the coach's shoulders, on Doc's shoulders? He has to shoulder some of the blame, and I take no pleasure in saying that. Anybody that knows me knows how tight I am with Doc Rivers. I love the man personally, and I think that he's an exceptional coach. But he didn't do an exceptional job in this series, particularly games five, six, and seven. One would easily argue he got out coached, um, and that was because basically you're not even pointing to the games themselves, how the Clippers weren't de- uh, able to defend against a, a two-man, a, a two-man offense. As far as I'm concerned, uh, they certainly couldn't get the level of production, peel it out of Paul George to the degree that they needed to. Uh, Kawhi Leonard obviously folded in the game seven, one of the great choke jobs we've seen, and Lou Williams uh, just just didn't appear to be a consistent presence. Uh, but I think that ultimately you have to point to something else as well. This team was never a team throughout the season. Kawhi Leonard ex- exercising load management, Paul George being injured. Uh, you had several guys that didn't even want to come into the bubble, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's like they thought all, a, all year long that they could just turn on a switch. I'm not going to blame Doc Rivers for that. That's the player's responsibility for acting like a bunch of prima donnas, and they got exposed for it. And we have to sit here and take a moment to give the greatness of LeBron James some credit in this regard. The Lakers and, and Frank Vogel and his coaching staff, Jason Kidd, Phil Handy and those boys, they deserve a boatload of credit. They have been locked in all year long. And you see LeBron having cultivated a relationship there all year long, Max. You didn't necessarily see that with Kawhi Leonard. What they got in Kawhi Leonard was an elite basketball player. What they did not get was a leader that went out, went about the business of really showcasing how things needed to get done. He just was a quiet assassin, and it came back to haunt them, and it was even too much for Doc Rivers to overcome. So the coaching staff definitely deserves to share some culpability, but I'm putting most of it on the players and most of it on Kawhi Leonard. It's, it's really all on Kawhi. It's, and I don't mean that literally. Of course, everyone plays a role. Paul, Paul George choked as usual when you needed him most. Lou Williams came, much, came up much smaller than I thought he would, actually. I thought Montrez was dominated. It's not fair because there's a huge talent gap between him and Jokic. Uh, and, and also, we all recognize that the Clippers were not built in terms of the bigs, like the Lakers, for example, with Dwight and JaVale McGee, not to mention AD. Or even like Kawhi's team from last year with... Mark Gasol and Serge Ibaka, where you could f- play as good defense as you can on a guy and funnel him to the bigs. That's not this Clippers team. So, yeah, you could talk, you could point to the coaching staff. They never really gelled. They never really had chemistry. You could point to injuries. They didn't have a lot of time playing together. You could point to a lot of things. But it is on Kawhi Leonard. You know, I made the comparison earlier to Kobe's being up 3-1 on the Suns that year and me losing a dinner bet to Jim Lampley. No way a Kobe Bryant-led team falls, you know, loses a game seven when they were up 3-1. But Kobe really wasn't playing with anybody. And I used to talk to Kobe about that, and we'd argue about it. I'm like, that's the one game, Kobe. You know, like, you're showing everyone, here's a bounce pass. You don't want me to score? And he'd be like, come on, man. We had no chance to win. We, I, I, like, I willed us to be up 3-1 in the first place. He's not wrong about that. Once he got Pal Gasol, they won a couple championships. Kawhi wasn't on that kind of team. Kawhi was on a team with a bunch of guys who can play. So what I'm saying is, he's not a playmaker like LeBron or even like Giannis in a lot of ways, even though his passing has gotten better. He doesn't have the same kind of personality. All that is true. But when you are elite, you have to at least lead by example in the fourth quarter of a game seven when you were once up 3-1, when you had double-digit leads at the half in three consecutive games or around the half yesterday. They were up 10, and, and they were up 16 and then 17 in the two previous games. You mentioned it, Stephen. At least get to the free throw line. Like you, and, and so, yes, you can literally place blame here and there and whatever, but this is on Kawhi. Not even so much that they lost, but the way they lost. That, and that's how history is going to record this. So let me get this straight. Unlike you were willing to do in the first block when you talked about Kawhi, you're willing to acknowledge now that the situation with Kobe was an entirely different situation than it was with Kawhi last night. There's no perfect analogy, but I'll say this. You brought up 
Kawhi struggling in a game seven in the fourth quarter. And I pointed to the fact, and you brought it up in comparison to Kobe Bryant, and I pointed out that in a game seven, Kobe also struggled shooting very poorly. He had Pau Gasol and Meta World Peace to help bail him out. That's all, that Kawhi's teammates didn't help bail him out. That doesn't excuse Kawhi. We're just comparing the two. You're saying he collapsed up 3-1. I'm pointing out that same thing happened to a Kobe team. The situations aren't exactly the same, of course. They're two different players on two different teams. But let's not act like it didn't happen. I pointed out that LeBron James in four consecutive fourth quarters choked away a finals against Dallas. He has since more than made up for that. But at that moment in time, that was the truth, and it had to be said. And at this moment in time, this is the truth. Mm. So I'm saying it. I just tell the truth. Uh, Molly, I was trying, Molly, I was trying to everywhere. Google. Mm -hmm. uh, Molly, yeah. Molly, I was trying to Google economist. I was trying to Google economist uh, that I could bring up because I think they do a hell of a better job of trying to explain themselves out of this situation than Max has tried to do over the last two hours. You could go to commercial. John Let's Maynard Keynes. When the facts change, Max so does my opinion. Max is a truth teller what do you to you today. I just want I, I, you to know. He's quiet. a truth teller. You're so embarrassing the truth yourself. You're, he's not at about right, seven different truths. You're embarrassing yourself. Let's go to Those commercial. seven different truths. Let's go. I ain't want to listen to him no more. I don't even want to listen to him no more. I'm going to break. You bend Bye. the back right, we'll to your view. We're going to close I up the show. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.